is what separates the men from the boys right here. That is cutting up a perfectly good Porsche 911 because we're crazy. Merry Christmas and welcome back to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel. Today is the day, well at least that I've been really waiting for, and that's getting the K-Series bolted to the transaxle and into the car. So check it out, and I hope you enjoy the video. Now this is a moment we've all been waiting for. We're gonna bolt this to that. guy there we're actually pretty close I'll probably just have to shim this up with some uh, two by fours or something heck I think this freaking transaxle weighs just as much as the uh, motor does that sucker's heavy it's now uh, this evening and I'm working on getting my Kennedy Engineering adapter plate bolted on. So all I'm gonna do now for the time being is throw in just a couple bolts to get the adapter plate bolted to the motor and then the transaxle bolted to the adapter plate. So it's all one piece. So I'll put like three bolts on each piece so everything's together at least. And, um, and then we're gonna get it in the car so I can start doing fabrication work to the car get it bolted in and um, that way make sure, you know, all of our heights and all that stuff is all groovy. All right, so we're just gonna throw four bolts in this thing. Okay, so the first issue we're running into, it's really not an issue because uh, Kennedy Engineering actually notes it in their notes is the cone on the starter here is hitting the adapter plate and they say, bevel off their adapter plate pretty much whatever you need to uh run that starter motor so um i'm thinking we'll just do exactly what they're saying all right got our carbide cutter and we're just going to so that's what i had to put on this um starter motor cut out it just had to add a bevel to it um it wound up being not that significant let's see if it fits now okay now we got our dowels on yeah this was fighting me before it was acting strange obviously because is going in at a weird angle. Still a tight squeeze in there, but it's uh, it fits now. Okay, so now we have this bolted in. It's time to get the transaxle on, and we're just going to knock in a couple of these uh, uh, dowels here. Okay, now we're gonna take this sucker here. It should just be a matter of lining up the dowels. I'm gonna hear some heavy breathing because I'm fat, getting fat, and out of shape. I have this bolted to the adapter plate. That all looks good. But right here is pretty far off. See, this is why you should probably read instructions and not be stupid. Put transaxle up to the adapter plate and mark transaxle where nose cone of the starter interferes. Use a grinder or any method you'd like. Do not cut too much as to only, only as much as need to clear the nose cone of the starter. Quite literally spelt out for me. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I didn't really read the instructions, obviously. And um, I also didn't expect to have to do that kind of stuff with this kit. But hey, we're blazing new uh, trails here. So we got to do what we got to do. 
So the next guy who does this, which might be you, read the instructions first, or at least maybe watch this video and learn from my stupid ass. All right, next step here is to, we put our dowel pins in on the adapter plate side, got our transaxle uh, bolts in on the uh, two dowels, and right here you can see the cone of the starter motor wants to interfere with the transaxle. Now, I was reading the instructions and I thought that you just ground away a little bit of the starter. Um, that was not what you do. Uh, I started grinding on the other one. I'm like, eh, I'm not sure. This doesn't really quite look right. So I have two starter motors, one, one from the other motor. And uh, yeah, that's not what you do. Um, don't be stupid, don't be like me. And this is what you do. You actually grind down the transaxle uh, as little as possible. So what we're gonna do is just follow that Sharpie mark, just kind of create a little uh, gouge out there because obviously this bolt hole here on the transaxle is not no longer utilized because that would go directly into the starter motor. And um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna unbolt this right now and grind that out. Let's give that a shot. Just so you guys know, I went down approximately 15 millimeters, or on the American side, that's what, five eighths of an inch depth wise. And we went in about 10 millimeters in. It looks like I do have to come down just another. Okay guys, so I was hitting here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just flush it off to the bottom of the factory bolt hole there. So that that's a good guide for you guys. But that also leaves us our inner uh, casing here for the transaxle. But yeah, we're gonna essentially just take and flush this up right there. See what I'm saying? All right, let's try this one more time here. So that went much, much smoother. We have our K-series bolted to our transaxle now. So those slight modifications we had to do to the um, starter motor area, we're all in good shape. So now it's time to roll it under the car. We're halfway through getting this up and in here. And it's just a matter of uh, jack one up, jack the other up, kind of keep it level. You know what I mean? Going like this. As you guys can probably see here, these two holes have to go right here. And there's two long bolts that go right through that. So if we can just get one, one of those in, our transaxle will be supported in the rear. And then we can mess with the front, you know, going that way. So that's kind of the goal as of this second. That's on the uh, transaxle side. Now let's see what's going on up front on the motor side. Here's our first look. Okay, so I can already see, it's hard to see, but one of the uh, studs for the valve cover is hitting the top, which is fine. I have a remedy for this. I have a remedy, boys. About to call it quits for tonight, but the motor is technically in the car. We have it centered. Um, the front is, you know, we just got a bolt going through the transaxle. It's held up by a jack for the motor. And now we're at the point with our, our height clearance. The main issue is the uh, rear bolt there. And guys, I'm gonna level with you. I'm really not like, I don't know. 
You see all that room in there? It's just hitting that back bolt, which is fine. Uh, I, I know this motor has to go up uh, quite a bit more, but I'm not seeing why anybody just doesn't cut this out. By this, I mean, let me show you. It's like the easiest solution ever. Let's hop in the car here. So I'm not seeing this as a really that big of an uh, issue. The way I look at it is the this seam right here is on the exhaust side of the valve cover. And we're hitting um, right about here. So I am thinking, well, just cut all this out right here where it's hitting and we'll just make a bolt-on little plate here and it'll be something we can access from inside the car because i think it's ridiculous that you can't service you know spark plugs or coils or anything like that with this setup i mean that doesn't seem to be the right way to do it no matter you know how much you want to fight it i think the answer is just to make a simple access uh panel inside the car and call it a day I mean, there's like an inch of sound deadening too on the carpet, so you might not even notice it from inside the car. I mean, it's not like once you get it, it's not like any of this is usable space or anything like that. So unless you're a purist, which you're not, if you're case swapping one of these cars, I think this is the most reasonable thing to do. And then all you gotta do is pop this little piece out, you know, make it a, you know, six bolts or something. And like I said, it's just gonna be a little bump up, bump down. The valve cover will sit right up and in there. Throw some dynamite or something to give it a little sound deadening. And then when you need to access your spark plugs and coils, a couple bolts, pop this off, and you're wrenching, and not really conveniently, but inside the car, and it's a, it's a good deal. So, I mean, that's that's my solution. I don't think we really have to reinvent the wheel on this. So the only thing I wouldn't want to get into is cutting any of this out here, this kind of structure, you know? But cutting this, I mean, there's no structure. It's just a basic firewall. I mean, it's not really doing much in there, so. All right, friends, it's the next day. We are uh, going over our height here, um, which is the largest battle with this motor. And now we're going to check out our rear cross member. So I'm going to attempt to raise up the uh, stock cross member and see where it hits. Now factory, it, there's just a tiny little gap on the bell housing there of the transaxle. So um, that's kind of what we're shooting for. We want to keep it as low as possible. Um, so the center of gravity and the weight is as low as we can get it and then um, go from there. Okay, so the other side I've bolted in on this bottom bolt here, and you can see we're hitting the cross member now. So we need to go up another approximately center to center, about an inch and a quarter. We need to still go up with the whole assembly. Right now we're touching with our, uh, our sud here in the back. So at this point, I'm just gonna pull the trigger and cut out the bulkhead inside the car and see how much we can gain. Um, I'll probably have to shave off the top of this timing cover here and that's also no big deal. So at this point in time, you can see this body seam right here. That's what we're gonna uh, measure off of. Now, this stuff right here is not really structural at all. Um, you can actually push down on it. So I'm not worried about cutting this out really at all. It doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, real structure in this part here. It does start, you know, to get a little structural back here. I hope we don't have to dig into this part, but I don't think we will because this is right where the um, that that area I said I didn't want to cut into. That's where that is. So I'm thinking we just uh, do that here and we'll just cut right along here. Open it up the width of the valve cover, maybe a little bit wider 
and just see how it looks once the window's in there. That's what we're gonna do, guys, executive decision. And like I said, this was a plan all along, and you know now we can access our coils and plugs and everything from inside the car, and we'll just have to uh, kind of modify the carpet in back here. I'm almost thinking instead of just having a you know bulge out piece right here, maybe do the whole thing, you know, make a big window. That way you can access injectors and things like that on this side, and it will be symmetrical in the car. So we'll just bump it out here and make a, you know, just a nice little panel bulge, you know, an inch or so, come right up here and back down, and that will be our solution. All right, quick change of plans. We now have to go in and with a torch, remove this uh, sound deadening. There's just a square of sound ending on there and um, just torch it and scrape it and it's nasty so a respirator and all that stuff is definitely necessary but I want to get that all out of the way uh, now so it's not an issue and I'm not trying to cut through it with a blade because then it gets gross and super smoky and just it's a mess so uh, we're just going to get rid of it now um, so all I do is heat it and then a little lacquer thinner to clean up the uh, area. Now that we have the uh, sound deadening there removed, um, there's like this little plug. It actually looks like a, and on normal cars, it's like a floor drain. This, they have, it like crimps in. Um, and our line will be cutting right through it, which is just gonna be kind of wonky. So now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm gonna go with my original idea. And we're just gonna cut right along this seam here. And this here, we're gonna leave like a half inch to an inch on the inside. And we're just gonna follow these lines and do, um, and it'll just be a symmetrical raised bump in the whole center of the car. And like I said, guys, this stuff is not, you can see this is not like a structural piece. So um, that's what we're gonna do. And that will also allow us, like I said, now we can have full access here to the whole, um, uh, top side of the motor injectors fuel lines all that stuff you can just access easy from up top underneath or from behind so it really gives you a lot of options uh, to work on the car uh, if you have problems so i think this is the best way to go and it'll look better than having just one bump over here and not um and i think it'll be easier to upholster over afterwards as well so we're gonna do that all right guys it's what separates the men from the boys right here. That is cutting up a perfectly good Porsche 911. Because we're crazy. Was exciting you can see i put a piece of aluminum on top of a towel and stuff in case you know so just little pieces and stuff aren't getting in there i only have a piece of uh a piece of cellophane uh, plastic wrap over the valves and everything so i didn't want to get too crazy well look you can see right inside the car now we're gonna see and i'll probably be able to cut this one from the uh outside here and it's hard to see, but there's a body seam here, but let's jack it up and just see where we're at. See if this cross member fits now. Check it out. Cross members bolted on. 
transmission clears barely. So I did find another half an inch um, that I can shave down. So we don't have any chance of rubbing on the transaxle there on that cross member. Cause right now it's like, it's probably like a 16th of an inch. It's really tight. And we are hitting right here. Okay. So that this part is what I didn't want to cut out, but I can still shave off about a half inch on this valve cover. Um, and that's what we're going to do. Okay. So this is the back of our valve cover here. So we are hitting right here. So I think I will pull this uh, cut down to this original mark I had and just give us that. But now, as you can see, we have full access to everything in here. This is our last coil here. Yeah, even if we ran stock ones, I wouldn't be able to get this coil pack out here. So that's still, that still is a uh, thing, but now we have our whole whole area right here with our intake manifold is going to be we'll have plenty of clearance on that it looks like so as you guys can see um it definitely takes a little bit of balls to just cut into a car like that but i've done it so many times that it doesn't even matter at this point you know uh, you do kind of internally go back and forth a little bit like even when i sold the motor i'm like what am i doing i have a perfectly good run porsche 911 here like just be happy blah 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 but you know, we, you come up with a plan and you got to execute it. So that's exactly what we're doing. And the results are speaking for themselves. So, you know, you sometimes just got to go for it. And at the end of the day, it's just metal and cars. I mean, none of this is like life, you know, uh, life altering stuff here. So um, we're just having fun and building hot rods. And that's what it's all about, guys. But look at all the room on the side of this motor. That side. I mean, the accessories look like a little bit, but on the back side, there's tons of space down here. So just, you know, now that I'm just seeing stuff in place, it's opening my eyes up to, you know, intercooler placement and just kind of, you know, not really harping on it or focusing on it, but just kind of putting it in the back of my head now and starting to see where things can, uh, things can go here. All right, let's get this panel finalized and cut out and we'll pop our valve cover out and get that, uh, that trim down to where we need it as well. So just so you guys remember, this is not a structural piece here. This thing is just really just a firewall. Um, you know, you could see when I was pushing on it, it was, you know, all floppy and not rigid. So let's jack this sucker back up and check out our clearance now. I think that's gonna be it. All right, so checking it out from the inside, you can see just notching that right there, just that extra inch gave us all the clearance we needed. Um, I can actually probably go even a little more um, or even just with a grinder, uh, you know, just to straighten this out a little bit. It's a little bit wavy. I was planning on uh, probably putting like some edging around this to just clean up the cut before we put our cap on. Now I'm considering uh, building a cap out of uh, metal first for my application. And then um, if this is something I want to sell, I might make a mold off of it and do a, a fiberglass version. And that would be so much easier for people because it would be a direct bolt on. It would conform right to all the molds and uh, body lines and all the stuff that's inside here. So that's something we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, as you can see, now we have full access to our motor. So, uh, especially with all the, you know, I just didn't like the idea of not being able to do plugs and wires and things like that um, without having to pretty much drop the motor. It's literally two bolts to drop the motor down once this is gonna be bolted in. However, um, it's still, you know, you gotta undo boost pipes and on my application, I'm not sure it's gonna be the easiest. I'm gonna kind of make it, it might be a kind of a wild setup. So, you know, having to undo charge pipes and undo all this stuff just to you know check your plugs is kind of you know for me i think this is a much much better solution 
But there's many ways to achieve the same goal, and this is just the way I, I personally think um, is best at this point. All right, so let's lower this back down, and we'll pop this valve cover off and see if we can uh, trim the valve cover uh, a little more. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Feel free to like and subscribe. I have a lot more content um, to get through and get out to you guys. Uh, the swap is going really well at this point, and there's a lot more uh, I have to share with you. So thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.